Hello, my silly little flockers. It's Carla, and I'm here today at my neighborhood grocery store to figure out what makes snacks taste like chicken so that I can figure out how to make vinegar chicken popcorn for you. Let's go inside. <laughs> Oh, wild buffalo! Oh, here's my buffalo. Secure the bag. We're heading home. Before I get into all the chickeny flavored snacks that we just went out and bought, I knew from the start a couple of things. I knew that I wanted this popcorn recipe to have butter because my other popcorn recipe famously does not have any butter. My problem with most buttered popcorns is that the butter is either artificial butter, so it's not butter at all, or it's clarified butter, which congeals in the bottom of the bowl. In order to eliminate that and also build up flavor, I was like, I will go one step further and I will make brown butter. And the brown butter is also gonna give me that like crispy fried flavor that you get from frying chicken. Even though this recipe went through literally five different iterations, it always had the brown butter. So it's one stick of Danish creamery, European style butter, and it's gonna make enough of this delicious butter for a really giant, ginormous batch of popcorn. And I also wanted to use the whole stick and like not make it complicated. This episode is sponsored by Danish Creamery. Danish Creamery makes a special kind of butter. It is small batch and extra churned, which yields a higher butter fat butter. Danish Creamery has 85% butter fat, which is higher butter fat than your standard stick of butter. What that means in practice is less liquid content and a lot more flavor in its place. You guys already know we love fat in this house. The Danish Creamery European style butter is the secret ingredient in today's recipe for vinegar chicken popcorn. The way that the spices bloom in this high butter fat, Danish Creamery butter is delicious and aromatic and you guys will understand when you see me make it. The people at Danish Creamery know that attention to time, detail, and using truly exceptional ingredients makes a world of difference. I could not agree more, and I'm all about that. Just wait until you taste this popcorn. <laughs> Mwah. How much of the popcorn journey did you actually witness me going on? I had one of them and it was the first one. And it, it didn't really taste like chicken. I could figure out vinegary and I could figure out spicy. Sure. But I was going for buffalo chicken and I just didn't taste chicken. Here are some things that are supposed to taste like buffalo chicken. Monosodium glutamate. Love the stuff. Take MSG. Look at this one. It just says... Flavor. Flavor. This one has MSG and natural and artificial flavors. Chicken seasoning. I've chicken never seen seasoning. this brand before, but what is chicken seasoning? Salt and spices. My thing is like, what is giving it the chicken flavor? What is the chicken part of chicken flavor? Where's the chicken? Exactly. Somebody find me the chicken. This Don't. one actually has powdered chicken and rendered chicken fat. I think fat. that's the way to go. Powdered chicken, hard to find in stores. So what I learned from all of my chicken seasoning and spicing journey was that usually what makes things taste like chicken in this world of snacking is MSG. Sure. Salt, sugar, natural and artificial flavor, and once in a while, chicken fat. But it's not actually chicken. There was a moment in time where I thought about telling you to go to the store and buy a ramen kit and just take the seasoning packet out of it and put it on the popcorn. We could do that. That felt to me- Kind of lazy. Kind of lazy. Kind of like cheating. Especially when Magical 7 Spice Umami Popcorn is so iconic and special. And I'm like actually competing with myself at this point. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. I went through a bunch of different bouillon adventures. Chicken bouillon in the cube, the powdered version. It wasn't giving chicken. I went back to my favorite bouillon, which only comes in a paste. 
These are the trials and tribulations. There are some videos out there that just show melting bouillon into butter and pouring it over popcorn, and it looks great, and it's a fraud. It's a lie and it's a fraud because what happens is not that. That is not what happens. You have to dissolve the bouillon in water, which is what we normally do. We take bouillon, we dissolve it in water, and then you have like chicken stock, essentially. You have to dissolve it in water, but then you have to combine it with the butter, and we're also cooking off liquid. <laughs> it's a whole thing. While I've got my little chickeny mixture reducing, um, it does help to cut the Danish creamery European style butter up into smaller pieces so that it melts quickly and evenly. And I'm just gonna start by doing that. And it doesn't have to be cold, but it helps if it's not like freezing cold, it's just gonna take longer. And one of the coolest things that I've learned about European style butter, high butter fat butter, the reason why bakers love it so much is because it has elasticity, like higher fat, less liquid, makes more stretch and bend to your pastries. And you can kind of feel it when you are cutting it and shaping it, that it's just got this like kind of stretch to it. So you can kind of tell when the mixture is reduced because you're gonna start to see the granules of the bouillon. It dissolved, but it needs this available liquid. So you'll start to see little crystals of bouillon and that's when you know it's time to add the butter. And once the butter goes in, I don't wanna rush this process. It's gonna be very similar to any other time that you might have made brown butter but the bubbles are gonna look a little bit different, like glossy, stretchy, shiny bubbles. The bubbles are going to change from being like really big and gigantic to this kind of like light and foamy at the end. So with the brown butter and bouillon, you need to follow the time that's in the recipe and other things that you should need to be looking at and for is this browning up on the edge, which is actually more of the bouillon solids coming back and like reattaching to each other and scraping up the bottom, which is going to be a mixture of browned bouillon and browned milk solids. The flavor of the bouillon has infused into the brown butter and the bouillon itself also got brown and the butter got brown. So it's a lot of layers of flavors so there's gonna be a lot of nice, like caramelly, rich, cooked bouillon that now has the flavor of like, just very roasty chicken flavor. So how'd she do it, folks? How did she do it? Starting with that like hot sauce, butter, chicken dream. I knew I needed the vinegary thing because if you look at a bottle of hot sauce, it's chilies and vinegar and salt. So I needed that vinegary flavor and I needed the spicy and that was relatively easy. So you can buy powdered vinegar. It might take a little specialty store or you're gonna order it from Calustians, but this is white distilled vinegar powder formation. So it's two parts that. And then in order to get the like brown, toasty, fried, like cooked crunchies of like a breading, I went to milk powder, which has that kind of lactic richness. It's gonna complement all the lactic notes in the actual butter, but it's also gonna taste like rich and like a little bit sweet the way toasted bread is like a little bit sweet it's sort of tricking your palate that like maybe there's some nice browned breading and like the edges of the fried chicken before it gets doused in our hot sauce butter got that from milk powder and then spiciness i was just going with cayenne because cayenne is a really kind of classic hot pepper that's used in a lot of hot sauces some like Tabasco, if you look at Tabasco or Frank's, like they don't always tell you what kinds of chilies it is. And then I could have gone on like 77 Reddit, but I didn't. I just put cayenne in it. Then in my spice aisle journey, cause I did stand and stare and spend a lot of time just in the spice aisle. Um, I kept seeing chipotle powder and I was like, well, that's nice. Cause it's like more, way more smoky. Cause it's smoked and it's a different chili. So, I brought that in just to give a little like dimension. 
This is like contour. Like if the cayenne is the blush, the chipotle is like the contour, if you know what I mean. If you know, you know. So we have sour, we have like sweet, toasty, aromatic, and then high register like spice, fruit, and then like a nice bitter sweet smoke and also more heat. You need sugar to complement all that. Cause it's like, otherwise it's just too vinegar. It's just like hot and spicy and like nothing else. Three quarter teaspoon granulated sugar. And that's where I was for a long time. It was this mix, and this is a good thing to get going and have. And I made the popcorn and I was like, it's good, but I'm still not getting chicken. <laughs> where is the chicken? So I did two things. I busted out some chicken fat and that's what I popped the kernels in. The chicken fat popping of the kernel unlocked a level of chicken. It still wasn't enough. I don't even want to tell you now. Kind of want you to know where I was before I added the secret ingredient, but I will tell you some things that I tried that didn't work. One of which was celery seed. I thought I was a genius. I was like, oh my God, the answer is celery seed because you eat celery sticks with your buffalo. And I was took a couple bites and I was like, nailed it, did it, genius, <laughs> who would have thunk? But then um, I went and walked the dog and while I was walking the dog, I had all these celery seeds stuck in my teeth and they were actually like quite bitter and quite unpleasant as they, as you're just eating a celery seed. So celery seed, it turned out was not the answer, but it did get my tiny little brain thinking associated flavors. And like, if I could add celery and that kind of takes you to that Buffalo place, could I trick my brain into thinking it was having chicken? I think we have to pop the popcorn and then all will be revealed. I wanted to use a whole stick of butter. So then it was about what is the right amount of popcorn for that? And it turns out it's a lot. So this is an eight quart. If you're using a Dutch oven, which I highly recommend for popping popcorn, get your, your, your six and a half to your eight quart. Chicken fat, AKA schmaltz. One of the things on the journey I kept seeing, and maybe it's just like a new brand that's getting distributed here where I live, this like duck fat product that you used to have to go to the butcher to get is now in this jar. And it was in a lot of the like oil and spice aisles. You could use duck fat, of course. Goose fat, should you have it lying around, go for that or don't do any of this and use vegetable oil. Peanut oil is my favorite for popping stuff, but any neutral oil. What I like to do is melt the fat first and then I coat all of the kernels in the fat. This is a no kernel left behind household and I want all the kernels to pop. The best sound, is there a better sound? Do they make white noise of popcorn popping? That'd be a good one. Oh yeah, totally smells very deliciously chickeny. I don't understand air popping and I'm suspicious of it. I think we're there. Okay. So now, okay, I'm just gonna give a little steam escape. Gorge. I talked about the spatula in a different video and someone was like, I love that spatula. What was, they were like, am I doing something wrong? Cause I actually like that spatula. It was that it wasn't right for the job that I was doing in the moment, but it is really good for tossing popcorn. Guess what I don't say? Unpopped kernels. Beautiful chicken brown butter. Just pouring that over. And I'm doing this in the pot for a couple of reasons. One is that it's just a great vessel and it's already here. So like why get something dirty? Obviously everything fits, but I'm going to use the residual heat of this stock pot with the butter to bloom the rest of the spices. It's just another flavor upgrade to do that. Okay, so once the brown butter goes in, I'm gonna toss to coat, woo, beautiful evenly coated, you need that because these spices need something to stick to. And we also want that butter spice combo to bloom all the spices. 
You want to add the secret ingredient? No, I don't want to yeah. add the secret. Stop going. The secret isn't happening. This is where I was, and this is where I was stuck. And I was happy, but it wasn't everything. I'm not talking ill about myself when I say that one of the not great things about the Magical 7 Spice Umami Popcorn is that I don't do the extra step of grinding up the nutritional yeast. So one of the really great things about this popcorn recipe is that all of the spices that I used are in that fine format. So it coats really, really well. All right, let's try. I haven't salted anything. I used the salted butter but that's really not that much salt for the quantity that we have. But also the bouillon itself is very, very salty. So you wanna add all those spices and taste first. And this is the batch that I brought to hang out with my friends to watch the eclipse. It was this version. It was Kelsey, who you may know from Kelsey's California Citrus Cooler. You may know her from Lamb Hand episode, and you definitely know her from um, Fancy Fries. Hang out with Kelsey and her husband. And they were like, it's really, really good. I was like, what is it giving? They were like, it's giving hot sauce. And I was like, right, is it giving anything else? And they were like, hot sauce? And I was like, right, nothing wrong with it. But I was still eluded by chicken. And then standing there in the spice aisle, stroke of genius. This is a very old school product. You may or may not know it. You may have seen it in your grandma's kitchen. I feel like they have never changed the logo. Bell's seasoning. This is like your classic, put it on a chicken seasoning, but it's also a classic for making chicken stuffing or chicken dressing. And this was the thing that tricks your brain into thinking it's having chicken. <laughs> and what it is is, Rosemary, oregano, sage, ginger, marjoram, thyme, and pepper, which are all like in that world of chicken stuffing. Oh. It does smell like, it does smell like cucumber. Just smell it. It really is melony. Melon. So just half a teaspoon of Bell's chicken seasoning which is not chicken. It's a seasoning you would put on chicken and eat with chicken, but it makes your brain think it's chicken. I feel like the little kid who says it's corn, but it's like, every time I taste it, I'm like, it's chicken. <laughs> so I, I thought I was on the cusp of buffalo chicken. It turns out I made vinegar chicken popcorn. Vinegar chicken is like a pan roasted chicken that you finish with butter that browns and like lots of vinegar and it's like tangy and juicy and chickeny and browned and roasty. So I think what I learned was there's a reason why there's no buffalo chicken popcorn on the market because it's impossible. And I also learned that you can put butter on popcorn and not have it congeal. You just have to take a high butter fat butter, cook out the remaining liquid that was in it, and then you have added value butter that coats and enrobes and never gets weird and gloggy. There were twists and there were turns, but there was one thing about this popcorn recipe that stayed the same. Thank you again to Danish Creamery. We love fat in this house. Straight edges. See this? <laughs> this isn't a circle, nor a spiral, nor a sphere. No. It's a whatever the 3D rectangle is called. What's the point of that? Right here. That's the point. <laughs> that was the beginning, and it was also the end. That it's the whole point of everything. <laughs> what do you taste? I taste chicken. Do you think this is better than the one I usually make with nutritional yeast and Aleppo? It's hard because this seems like a lot more complicated, but I think it's really good. Wait, I think it's worth the effort to try it once. That's all we want. That's all we need, guys. Just try it once. Just try it the one time. 
you know, I think it's worth trying once. And if it's too much, then go back to Magical 7 Spice Umami Popcorn. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for. Can I get a drum roll, please? Oh, wow. That's true. You know? But you know, it's, as I said before, it's not about the journey all along the way. <laughs> it's Again, not a rhymes with cake. About bake. It's not about the journey. Oh, it's the friends we make. <laughs> you didn't say the first part. It's not about the journey. We. We take. <laughs> it's about the friends that we make. I made a bunch of friends. Just one second. <laughs>